identifying quadratic functions. Our objective is to identify quadratic functions and determine whether they have a minimum or a maximum, as well as graph a quadratic function and give its domain and range. Why learn this? The height of a soccer ball after it is kicked into the air can be described by a quadratic function. Well, what is a quadratic function? It's any function that can be written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are real numbers and a cannot equal zero. Below is a graph of a quadratic function. In lesson 5.1, you identified linear functions by finding that a constant change in x corresponded to a constant change in y. The differences between y values for a constant change in x values are called first differences. So if the first differences are the same, then it's linear. If the second differences are the same, then it's quadratic. So let's look at an example. Identifying quadratic functions. Tell whether each function is quadratic and then explain. So notice here how our x values keep increasing by 2. Our y values, the first differences, if you look, they go minus 6, minus 2, plus 2, plus 6. The first differences are not the same, so it's not linear. So now let's check our second differences. Plus 4, plus 4, and plus 4. The second differences are the same, so you stop there, and then you know it's quadratic. Let's look at another example. This one is not a table of values. However, if you recall back to the definition, it had stated that it follows the format ax squared plus bx plus c, and a can't be zero. So there is no a value. If you were to have had it, you would have had y equals 0x squared minus 3x plus 20. It's the only way to not have your x squared in there. So this, therefore, it is not a quadratic function, so no. Try this next one on your own. Now that you've had a chance to try it on your own, what did you think? Yes, it is quadratic. If you solve for y, you end up with y equals negative 3x squared minus 4. You moved this 3x squared to the other side away from y. Try this next one on your own. When you return to the video, the answer will be revealed below. So what we simply did was make a table. So we put our x values and our y values. Notice how the x values keep increasing by 1. If these are the same, then you know you can keep going. So now let's look at our y values. So our first differences are not the same. So now let's check our second differences. Keep in mind, if they were the same, we would stop there and it would have been linear. However, our second differences are the same, so it's quadratic. Try this next one. Now that you've had a moment to try this next one, let's see if you are right. You have a 2x squared value. And if you simplify, you still end up with y equals 2x squared minus y, so it didn't go away. Therefore, since a is not 0, you have yourself a quadratic. The graph of a quadratic function is a curve called a parabola. To graph a quadratic function, generate enough ordered pairs to see the shape of the parabola. Then connect the points with a smooth curve. So you want to plot enough coordinates to see that it's actually a nice curve, a parabola. Let's practice. 
So graphing quadratic functions by using a table of values. So when you're using a table of values, you simply plug these values in for x and then simplify. So plug negative 2 or substitute negative 2 in for x. So we have 2 times negative 2 squared, and that will give us 8. And then do the same thing with the negative 1. Substitute negative 1 in for x. So we have 2 times the quantity negative 1 squared, and that's going to give you 2. Try these next three. Now that you've had a chance to try those next three, did you get these answers? If you did, plot these coordinates on the grid. And remember, it's negative 2, 8 as your coordinate. So you go to the left 2 and then up 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And you would plot your coordinate. It's an xy coordinate, so it go across your x-axis first and then your y. So take a moment and plot these other ones. Now that you've plotted all five points, notice how you can see the parabola-like shape that it, it shows. So now you just sketch in a nice graph line. And there you have it. Take a moment and pause the video and try this next one on your own. When you return to the video, the answer will be revealed. And there you have it. Notice the only difference between this quadratic function and the previous quadratic function is notice how this one is positive and this one is negative. So when a parabola opens upward, that's when a is bigger than zero, so positive. A parabola opens downward when a is less than zero. You can think of that as a negative. Let's take a moment and identify the direction of a parabola. Tell whether the graph of each quadratic function opens upward or downward, and then explain. Well, since the a value is positive or greater than zero, it opens upward. In b, you're going to have to solve for y first. That way you can decide whether the graph opens up or down. So we're going to subtract 2x squared from both sides. And when we do, we now have y equals negative 2x squared plus 5. The a value is negative, so it opens downward. Take a moment and pause the video and try c and d on your own. When you return to the video, the answer will be revealed below. So in c, the a value is negative, so it opens downward. And in d, the a value is positive, so it opens upward. The highest or lowest points on a parabola is the vertex. If a parabola opens upward, the vertex is the lowest point. If a parabola opens downward, the vertex is the highest point. So, if you have a minimum, it's the lowest point on the graph. So it's going to be a graph that opens up so that way you have a minimum value. There is no maximum that you can actually obtain. If the graph opens down, you're going to have a maximum. So let's try. We're going to identify the vertex and the minimum or maximum. So for A. The vertex is this point right here, and that would be the coordinate 1, 5. And the maximum is 5. 
that's the maximum height of the graph. Let's try B. The vertex, so we need our xy coordinate, is negative 2, 5. Or sorry, negative 2, negative 5. And it opens up, so it has a minimum. And the minimum is negative 5. Take a moment and pause the video and try these next two on your own. When you return to the video, the answer for both will be revealed below. And there you have it. For the graph of y equals x squared minus 4x plus 5, the range begins at the minimum value. So keep in mind, your range is all your y values. So your y value has a minimum, but it keeps going. So your range is going to be y is greater than or equal to 1, because your graph is all larger than 1. Your domain, it's going to keep going to the left and to the right. Eventually, it will hit every number. So your domain would be all real numbers. Finding domain and range. So step one, the graph opens downward, so identify the max. So the maximum here was this negative one, four. The maximum, therefore, is four. The domain, when you're dealing with a quadratic, is always all real numbers. And now you have y is less than or is less than or equal to 4 because you have a maximum so the rest of your graph is below that 4. Take a moment and pause the video and try these next two on your own. When you return, the domain and range for each of them will be revealed. And there you have it. This also concludes our lesson on identifying quadratic functions.